we wanted to talk a little bit about brackets because mm -hmm. with March Madness and stuff, it seems like a lot of film Twitter has become occupied with the idea of brackets and rankings and uh, what have you. So we wanted to get a, get into it and talk a little bit about the best Spielberg movies, the best A24 movies, the best Netflix shows. Let's start it off with Spielberg though because Ready Player One, as you mentioned, is the latest Spielberg film in theaters. Uh, he's a director who's made a lot of films and a lot of very different films. So I think it'll be kind of interesting uh, if you, we have a bracket that we're working off of, which we'll post a link to in the description down below if you want to see as well. Let us know what you think. Let us know what would win in your bracket challenge. Uh, but let's start this off real quick. Art, the one through 16 matchup is pretty, e or one through 32, I guess, pretty 32, easy. Yeah. 16 uh, on each side. E.T. versus Steel Spielberg's debut film, the uh, TV movie Duel. I mean, I think Duel's really underrated, but I don't know if anybody's mm. gonna gonna go that over E.T. Ain't e. nobody put it in E.T. All right, so I think the way we're gonna do this is, for the most part, I think you and I are gonna agree, right? Because we have yeah. a podcast together. But if we ever don't we agree, we just, we together. yeah, we just come back and default to my opinion. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna have to do that with this one, but I definitely have to say I'm gonna have to phone home with E.T. So, I mean, it's number one for a reason. That, so. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so should we go to the next matchup? All right. So this was, I guess, one of the ones where it starts to get interesting. Color Purple versus Schindler's List. They're very different movies. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people who really stand for the Color Purple and love it a lot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you can necessarily go it over Schindler's List, which is the movie that kind of earned his, his Oscar and is kind of why many people consider him not just important, not just good, but important as a filmmaker. Bro, Schindler's List, you know the story about Schindler's List in his, in his school? Uh, what about? So you know how, like, the people who created film school didn't go to film school, right? <laughs> so, oh. uh, yeah, so he he decided to go to school. I, somewhere in California, one of the schools in California, and his uh, his final, his thesis, his, his senior project, whatever you want to call it, was Schindler's List. <laughs> the Academy Award winning... What race defining? Uh, can you even say race? For like the Jewish o yeah. opeth that is Schindler's List. That was his. That was his. That was what he turned in. I mean, yeah, he he volunteered to not get money for the movie because I think he said he he'd consider it blood money. Yes. Uh, but I mean, whether or not that's even publicity or not, it, it st it's just that the movie itself is really effective, really uh -huh. powerful at showing uh, the, you know devastation during World War II. I think it's one of the the classic. Uh, you know, <laughs> Holocaust films. It, you know the one no the, uh, just in, in illustrating the utter devastation. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go Schindler's List there. For sure, Schindler's fair. List. Next one up, Last Crusade, Indiana Jones versus the BFG. Not a lot of people saw the BFG in theaters. Uh, I, I think this is a pretty easy decision as well. Last going Crusade. Last Crusade. This one's hard. Yeah, so we got in the uh, 8 versus 21 matchup, Saving Private Ryan versus Munich. Now, Munich's Saving, good. Munich is kind of one of his more underrated movies. It I is. think a lot of people have been coming on late to Munich and really mm -hmm. appreciating what he did right? there. It's, yeah. like, it's like you'll see like an influx of a couple articles writing about Munich. Right? And you're like, oh, y'all barely rented this movie? Yeah. No, is it not? Munich is your, your favorite YouTube film essayist's favorite Spielberg movie. Pretty but much. it... I still just don't think That's it savage. can hold a candle to Saving Private no, Ryan. No, nothing's holding it. We, Saving Private Ryan is what you see on the back of every DVD for the newest war movie. There's something Saving Private Ryan is. That's yeah. what it always gets compared to. Always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, people like to say that Saving Private Ryan losing the Best Picture Oscar to Shakespeare in Love is the worst uh, Best Picture tragedy of all time. I, I think it's for a reason. People really, really think Saving Private Ryan's great. I do too. Jaws. The diesel's in this crazy. <laughs> Jaws versus Twilight Jaws. Zone. Yeah, I don't think we have to argue about that one. Jaws, Jaws is classic. Close Encounters of the Third Kind versus AI. I mean, I don't know if I'm, this is just because I'm young. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to just dismiss AI here. What? I'm saying AI. You're saying AI. Oh. I'm saying AI. I know it takes like 40 hours. I know it was, the VHS was like three VHS tapes that you needed to put right after another. There's something about AI. This was the movie that uh, um, Kubrick was working on. Yes, yes. And when he passed, he like, I don't know if it was from him or if it was a studio, they passed it on to Spielberg. Spielberg was the one that, that, that got the rights to it and he finished up the movie. Um, I know it's really long, but there's something about AI. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just the Close Encounters is also kind of great with that. And I, let's I, argue I don't know. it. Let's see. Let's discuss it. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this because I'm I'm looking at what it's gonna go up against. Right. So it doesn't matter to me if that right. makes any sense. You know, <laughs> they that, use the thing with brackets, right? <laughs> exactly. You, you, sometimes you're just like fodder for the top seeds. And right. Uh, either way, I think this choice is going to end up losing to Jaws. So maybe we just lean with AI because I, I, I remember it better encounter. too. Hey, you know what? How about we put them both because they're both going to get eaten up in the next one too. <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave that as a draw. Cool. You got uh, one, I got the other. All right, so going to mid 2000s Spielberg, we have Just Catch crazy Me right If You Can versus The Terminal. Two Tom Hanks Spielberg this crazy team right ups. Here. This, uh, this is a kind of fun matchup just because I, I kinda, love both of these movies. I have a soft spot for the Terminal. I know a lot of people uh, so make do fun I. of it, but no, I have I don't a big soft spot for that movie. I saw Terminal twice in theaters, boy. <laughs> I've never craved Burger King more in my life. I've never gone quicker to an Aldi and tried to collect all of the carts to get money the way that he did in the, in the Terminal just so we could have money to eat. Every time I'm in, I'm in an in a, a airport, that's what I always think of. I think of Tom Hanks, but catch me if you can I think that's one of his most underrated movies. I concur. Do you concur, sir? <laughs> I concur. It, it's just such a great film. It, it's <sighs> it's fun. It's interesting. It tells a really unique story, and it moves super quickly. It's got great performances. I mean, one of Leo's best performances and most yeah. overlooked performances yeah, as well. Yeah, pre Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's literally Wolf of Wall Street Junior. So I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like we gotta go catch, catch me, me if you can. If you can. Then in the last matchup on the left side of the bracket, we have Raiders of the Lost Ark versus 1941. Again, I don't think this is uh, much of a contest. Yeah, Raiders. So moving over to the other side of the bracket, Jurassic Park versus Sugarland Express again. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I mean... Think we're going Sugarland? So, sorry, sorry, Jurassic Park and Sugarland all the way just in the bracket. Um, so this is another one where the rankings don't necessarily line up with my feelings. Hook, they've got it 15, and The Post, they've got it 18. I know a lot of people diss on The Post. You and I kind of like The Post. We kind of like The Post, but I know a lot of people also like Hook. Hook is one of those where, you know, it's but not... do they, it's do, not, though? It's not big with critics, but they love it, right? A lot of people But do they, love or do they just love their childhood? Know. That's a good question. Because, like, I don't, I don't care love for Hook. Hook. Yeah. I don't like Hook either. I, but The Post, I know the joke is that Meryl, Hanks... Spielberg made for Oscars feminism made for Oscars all that stuff right the joke was the joke at the Golden Globes was uh, uh, when what's his name was mentioning what the movie was and then they come out with all the Golden Globes but what did it win and at the Oscars what did it win right and I think we've gotten to this point I think you and I had that discussion Tom Hanks Meryl Streep Spielberg make better movies than anybody else is making, but because we have them on such a pedestal, we start disrespecting them when they're coming out with good work. And I'll say this, you know, I'm not gonna say that, that that's a blanket for all of his movies, because I did feel that a bit for Bridge of Spies. I wasn't the biggest one for Bridge of Spies. E even less so when uh, my boy got snubbed, because I will never forget that. But... <laughs> R.I.P. Sloan's Oscar R. I. R. I. Yeah, We still remember you, but... The Post, and I said this after I came out watching it, the same people who love Spotlight, all of a sudden not liking the post confuses me. It yeah. really does confuse me. Yeah. Like I had said a joke, I was like, well, if Spotlight won Best Picture and the post is better than Spotlight, doesn't that mean it should win? And then someone said, he's like, no, that's not how it works because it's a different year. And I'm like, ah, that's kind of opening up exactly what I'm talking about. If, then we're clearly not talking about the merits of a movie. We're talking about what is the most... Um, Topical, Socio-political, exactly, thing going on. But The Post, I believe, is made better than uh, Spotlight. Oh. Or, well, yeah, Hook? definitely Hook. And Hook. And definitely Hook, yeah. All right. So. so let's give it to The Post. Next matchup, we got Lincoln versus Bridge of Spies oh, in, a, <laughs> in a battle of two Spielberg movies that I kind of didn't like so much. But uh, Lincoln's, Lincoln's actually, Lincoln. I think the difference is Lincoln's actually good and Bridge of Spies is not. I'll say I'm going to go for Lincoln just because of that uh, that story that uh, your boy DDL, Dana Day-Lewis, was, like, putting on his, his clothes, and then he looked at his watch or something, remember? Yeah. And he told the, the, the costume maker, he was like, excuse me, but I'm about to be in Phantom Thread, so I know how to do this, and this wasn't created until 18-whatever, so this doesn't exist yet. And he uh. called him out. He had to do those people's jobs, so that's how into character he was. Uh, the next matchup, The Lost World versus Amistad. Uh, Jurassic Park follow-up. Yeah. I actually haven't seen Amistad, so I can't really 
comment, but uh, I, mean, I don't think there's a lot of people that are taking it over Jurassic Park The Lost World. I'm not the biggest fan of Jurassic Park The Lost World. Is It's funner than Amistad, I would say, but I remember Amistad as being that movie we had to watch freshman year. Mm-hmm. Matthew McConaughey, like, <laughs> up, up in that place. Yeah. Um, I really don't care. I'll say The Lost World. I do think Amistad is the better film, but... Yeah, this little section of the bracket, I'm not feeling so hot on, yeah. but uh, I, I'll... Should we just go to the Lost World? I think more uh, people Lost want World. us to go to the Lost World. I don't care what people want, but I'm going to go Lost World anyway. Now, I don't understand this placement at all. They have Kingdom of the Crystal Skull as the number three seed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going up against Empire of the Sun. So, kind of a lucky draw. Wait, why, Kingdom- we don't, why we don't like Crystal Skull? Is that a thing? <laughs> y'all, don't, y'all don't like my boy going into a refrigerator? The fridge? And- Nuke the fridge? Yeah. Bro. Um... That being said, I actually haven't seen Empire of the Sun. It's one of my Spielberg blind spots. That is one of the only ones I haven't seen either. Yeah, right? that's the one with the with the with the kid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right in front of the sun. <laughs> is um, Christian Bale in that one? I think Christian I, Bale's I, in that one. He, the best way I'm going to put it to you is, is this way, right? Empire of the Sun, as I'm looking here, Empire of the Sun and Adventures of Tintin are the two that I have not seen. So, right. crucify me if you want, even though I've seen the rest of them. But right. I'm looking again, if, as we deal with brackets, you always look at it this, instead of spending so much time in one, Crystal Skull, Empire, don't matter to me, because this next one. Right, so we have Minority Report going up against War Horse. No. Um, I, I'm not gonna make my feelings sit in, I hate War Horse. I think I it's don't care really for bad. So even if I didn't like Minority Report, I'd go for War Horse, but I think Minority Report is super dope and underrated. I don't know how I explain this to you. Minority Report may win this bracket for me. If, if you don't put a, a good debate for some of these other ones, I'm going to tell you that right now, Minority Report. We'll get so back for, to Minority yeah. Report soon. Uh, Temple of Doom versus Adventures of Tintin. You just mentioned you haven't seen I Adventures haven't seen of Tintin. I have Tintin, so if you got... I have, and I don't really have much of an argument for it, especially not over Temple of Doom. Now, this is very interesting, because as soon as I came out of Ready Player One, someone said, so do you like Adventures of Tintin, then? Like, some guy was having an argument. Mm-hmm. So I guess Adventures of Tintin... And that style goes hand in hand with Ready Player One. There is like that adventure, action adventure, like kind of CGI for younger kids. I don't think Tintin is bad. I just the Temple of Doom is really good. Temple of Mm -hmm. Doom is iconic. Temple of Doom has multiple scenes that you know exactly what happens, even if the sound is off. You know, I, Uh, I, I'm gonna pick it because I think that's the one of the better franchises. Yeah. And just as a whole, so I'm going to put that there. And then in our last first round matchup, it's War of the Worlds versus Always. I'm picking War of the Worlds. Yeah. Unless you had something to say about Always, but I didn't care about that. Always was one of those movies that it's not the, it's not the same as Bridges of Madison County, but for whatever reason, every time I went to uh, Blockbuster, I for whatever reason thought Bridges of Madison County, I can't remember the other one that... That was also so similar to that, but I was just like, ah, it's just the old people yeah. going, in the, going in the middle of nowhere. But War of the Worlds, to me... I don't know how what the consensus is about War of the Worlds, but growing up and recently having seen it in back when I was in film school, I adore the heck out of that movie. It, it's become underrated because so many of his movies are great. Yes. The alien design, that scene in the van, the one-take yeah. scene in the van. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good-ass movie. Anyway, heading into the second round, our first matchup is E.T. versus Schindler's List. Battle of two of Spielberg's big classics. And, um, you know, I got to say, like, uh, even though Spielberg got his Oscar for Schindler's List and it's really uh, beloved by the critical community, I just feel like E.T. has this impact on so many kids and and in design and in in culture that it's almost hard to deny it as the winner in this matchup. Ain't you Jewish? I know, man. I'm but... picking Schindler's. How can you pick E.T. over Schindler's list? <sighs> okay, so let's talk about this then. All right, let's talk about this. This is where we get into it. Because, like, I think Schindler's list is a really great movie and a really admirable film. Mm-hmm. But I don't necessarily feel like it's doing a whole lot that we haven't seen replicated by other filmmakers in other films. There's the bit with the red coat. Uh, that it, that ended up being f- pretty influential, and there's like a lot of, and the cinematography in general is really beautiful in the movie. I think E.T. is the formula though for basically every kid meets a weird thing movie that has come since then. It it, it set up this whole genre, and it's. Uh, I it's, get what you're saying. Yeah. To more me, portable. to me, 
I don't know, man. I always quote, one more. Just one more. <laughs> All the time. I would fight for Schindler's List again. I'm going to play the bracket thing, and, and, and I'll side with you because E.T. is on the Amblin logo. Not recently. Yeah. For whatever reason, got taken off the most recent one. But he's <laughs> the one on the Amblin logo, right? People right. like Stranger Things. I'm going to say it because they like E.T. Right. I, I don't know how else to tell you. Like, seriously, watch any video talk about Easter eggs for season one of Stranger Things. It's literally, I kid you not, E.T. Oh, E.T. go over the, the trucks. Uh, 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 okay, we're not stealing. What's that? What's the beam? Uh, can I copy your homework? Sure, but don't make it seem too obvious. Right. Uh, okay, let's not hop over the truck. Let's have the truck hop over. It's crazy. I mean, like, I, maybe I'm losing some of my Jewish street cred by not going Schindler's List, which is a really Schindler. good movie. But like, I would I, go. But I'll go with E.T. mainly because, again, I'm playing the bracket game and I know what's going to beat it later. All right. So we got The Last Crusade up against Saving Private Ryan. This one's hard for me, too. Which what? one are you going with? Bro, Saving Private Ryan. Really? Are you kidding me? I already know my final two. You do? I know my final two. I already mentioned what the other one was and I'm making it oh, wait, obvious. You know what? I'm here. sorry. I'm thinking I'm mixing up Raiders and Last Crusade. Yeah, okay, it's not hard for me. It. Not hard for me at all. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, a thousand percent. Uh, okay. Then we go with the Jaws, Jaws versus, versus AI Close Encounters. Let's, let's yeah, we are mash up Close Encounters and AI, and they Both still movies, right? can't beat you, you Jaws. You got that Target combo set, and you're still picking Jaws. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just, you know, Jaws is so many horror movies now. It, mm -hmm. It's just the... I mean, it launched the blockbuster film era. It, it's so... It's the the music and the design and the cinematography. They, there's so much about it that's... The script, all of it. I said I'm going to the beach. <laughs> I don't like the beach. <laughs> All right, so I think this is an actually interesting matchup. We've got Catch Me If You Can versus Raiders, Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark. Ark. So Raiders, uh, I mean, that's the movie that for you it is a lot of people's kind of like iconic Spielberg film. You know, it's that Harrison Ford swaggering <laughs> adventure thing, and mm -hmm. it's got a lot of very iconic moments in it. I think I'd rather rewatch Catch Me If You Can. Okay. I, I would go catch me if you can, just slightly. So just would I, but okay. I was willing to have you sway me, so I'm glad you don't have to. Cause, uh, I'm a little worried that this is, is just like us being younger bias coming through. No, 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 no. Well, no, how is that a bias coming through? If anything, it would be a bias if we were raised with Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think Because then we're me, choosing it because it's a childhood thing. True. I mean, I think for me that uh, Catch Me If You Can was kind of like an iconic Leo role and, a, and just kind of like this really cool formative film. And, and I saw it later. I saw it way after it's released at, okay. at Blockbuster, so that's why I can, I can clearly say it. Here's, here's one thing I will definitely give for Catch Me If You Can. Way better intro titles. <laughs> oh, I'll say another thing for Catch Me If You Can. Amy Adams looks hot in braces. Yeah. Weird. So, <laughs> weird, but, but it's true. Either way, again, playing the bracket game. Uh, I, do you just want to finish out this one, or do you want to go to the second round on the other one? Uh, we can go second round on the other one. What do you think? All right. Yeah, let's do the second round on the other one. All right, we'll do a pretty quick. Jurassic Park versus The Post. Jurassic Park. Obviously. Not, yeah, Lincoln right. versus The Lost World? I'm saying Lincoln, but it don't matter. I'm guess. saying Lincoln as well. I mean, yeah, yeah we're not the biggest Lost the World fans. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Skull slash Empire of the Skull. somehow Sun made it into the second round. <laughs> Minority Report. I yeah, that's going all the way for me. Minority yeah, Minority Report, Report is a uh, underrated Spielberg gem. War of the Worlds and Temple of Doom, I think, is one of our more interesting second round matchups. Mm -hmm. uh, Temple of Doom is, I think, arguably the best Indiana Jones movie. It's got some of the most iconic moments of the franchise. I think a lot of times people talk about. Um, with, it's the two it towers. It's the two towers of the group. I know maybe some people don't like two towers out of the three either, but. <laughs> putting it exactly. out there. No, yeah, but it, it kind of like has the most going for it in a way, right. whether it's it's you know short round or it's the boulder scene or whatever uh -huh. have you. I, I don't know. Um, so you'd put it over War of the Worlds? Because this is where I actually would say my bias comes into play because this was a movie I did see in theaters. This was a movie that I still love to this day. You know, And I rewatch a bunch of movies just to see that I truly love it. Is it nostalgia? Is it a bias or whatever right. it is? And then I go, oh, okay. You know, I the thing this is, this one still wins me over, man. We, Sound design, think, everything. You know what though? Like, this is the intercut bracket, right? I think we gotta go War of the Worlds. Go! 
good. Okay, I thought for a second you were gonna say Temple of Doom because yeah. I'm willing to defend War of the Worlds with one simple thing. Remember, I don't know if you heard about it. Him saying it was like the 9/11 movie. Yeah. About how it's like people invading and they were always underneath. They were in our soil the whole time. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, okay. It's a whole yeah. other interesting discussion that comes with it, in my opinion. So. Yeah. All right. So we are into the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. That's all good movies from here. E.T. E. versus e. Saving Private, Private Ryan. Ryan. Where, where are you going to go? I, I've you put know, myself out there for E.T. You know who I'm going for, man. I'm going all the way to the end. I'm, I'm going all... You said it. The biggest upset in Oscars history. To this day, they talk about it that way. The mm-hmm. the opening scene and the handhold and the way that they shot it, the sound design, it is... It is Band of Brothers was because of this, right? Yeah. This started so many careers for so many of the people who are in this movie. Yeah. And then Band of Brothers was... And he, uh, uh, executive, produced it. Uh, Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Band of Brothers did the same thing. Go watch Band of Brothers and go, Tom Hart? James Mack? What? All these people that came out of Band of Brothers and, and spawned all of those careers, this movie did it first. Yeah. It's the movie that keeps on giving. I All these people are in bigger and better things, and E.T., She's in Santa Clarita diet. I, okay, that was my first thing. That was E.T. mean. E.T. still good. E.T. a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I will say for E.T. that, it, you know, I think it's a, I think for a certain segment of the population, it is a, a more beloved movie than yeah, no doubt. Saving Private Ryan. But I think Saving Private Ryan is a more universally respected, admired uh, ins- inspirational or, or deri- mm. derived from movie. I don't know. It, it's hard for me to not go Saving Private Ryan, I guess, in this matchup. Uh, we, we talked a bit about what we... Or I talked a bit about what I liked about Dunkirk in the way that it kind of shows the horror of war without showing the bloodshed. Mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan's kind of the opposite. It shows the horror yeah. of war by showing you the bloodshed. Bro, when that man picks up his arm, like he ain't got no arm, he goes, this is my arm. <laughs> he picks it up. <laughs> Yeah. So many people I- imitate that. And don't get me wrong, E.T. would make it all the way to, like, in somebody else's bracket, it probably would. If you really want to, you know, convince me about it, yeah. But both of these movies, it just shows, right? We're at that point in the bracket where either one can go. Yeah. Literally yeah. either one can go. And Only it's good super. options. It shows you why he's influential. Jaws versus Catch Me If You Can. So, look, if this was, like, the bracket of what you want to watch right now, I might go Catch Me If You Can. I'm not gonna argue that Catch Me If You Can is the better movie. Are so, you? What are you saying? What are you saying? Are you trying to toss it at me? I mean, I, look, I kind I don't know if I'm brave enough to go Catch Me If You Can here because I do love Jaws. <laughs> Zach, this is you right now. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to go out for drinks, but I mean like, I mean like if you I'm go available. out for drinks, I'm available. <laughs> I, yo, convince me if you want to, because Jazz is so good. I, I don't know if I can do this. Catch me if you can, I think is the more enjoyable one out of the bunch. All right. I'm saying it. All I'm right. not saying, is it, is it better than Jaws? I cannot say that. I, I can definitely, I'm not, I'm, this is probably one of the most difficult ones out of the bunch, mainly because of Oh, this. yeah, oh, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, um, that's but, top um. five. No, that's top five. Yeah. I would argue top three all-time best scores and it's just but um but um but um two notes two notes yeah it ain't this whole orchestra that you need for star wars it ain't it ain't not even uh uh, uh with uh raiders <sighs> okay let let's try this a different way which do you think has more iconic moments Jaws. Yeah. It's, it is. It's Jaws. But catch me if you can. I feel like if more people had seen it, if more people ain't seen the edited version on TBS, then maybe <laughs> it would get more love. That's the thing about it. Yeah, yeah. And it really would. So I will say this. Catch me if you can is the one movie that I'm telling you on the camera right now. Go watch it and catch it if you can. But I'm going to go Jaws. Yeah. I, I'm with you there. Like, if this was March Madness, I want Catch Me As You Can. Catch it's Me like As You Can as that my is, right. That's my Cinderella seed right there. Exactly. Like, I believe that one can make it, but but it's I don't Loyola know. and Loyola got out at this point in the bracket. Yeah, once so. it meets Michigan, man, it's over. It's over. So got it. So, got it up. Going with Jaws. 
Jurassic right. Park versus Lincoln. I think this is also a relatively easy one, although yeah. uh, Lincoln is well loved. I don't think it's nearly as mm -hmm. widely loved as Jurassic Park. Nope. Uh, and then Minority Report versus War of the Worlds. I mean, I know which way you want to go. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is actually kind of an interesting one because this is, this is the All of them both. the the premier. Uh, late career Spielberg action stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is post uh, post his real world private post. Saving Private Ryan stuff. This yes. is very like the CGI, like looking to the future uh, action Spielberg. And I think he does very different but interesting things in both of these movies. Um, I think Minority Report is the more unique and compelling of the two. I, I think it does yeah. a lot that things both in movies and in the real world have lifted from. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and I think a thousand percent. I literally, I, I feel like I mentioned Minority Report every other month in one of my videos. Yeah. So. So yeah, I feel like it's, it's just got that place in people's minds that I, I gotta go Minority Report here. Mm -hmm. All right, we are into the semi-finals. Four big movies left: Saving Private Ryan versus Jaws. Jaws almost got eliminated. Almost was upset. Mm -hmm. Can it pull it out versus Saving Private Ryan? I would like to remind you all that I'm very <laughs> curious to know your guys' opinions down below in the comments. Yes, I know some please of you guys let are us gonna, know. This is guys our bracket. Flipping out, yes, this is our bracket. And I have nothing for nothing but respect for my Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I have to. I have to. Saving Private Ryan... Is, is one of the movies... I know it's angsty. I know for a lot of people, this is the other side of the of the, of the the coin for the... Uh, yeah. The Fight Club debate, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fight, fight Club has to... It's it's so overrated at this point, and it's just a bunch of... It's the dude movie, right? Yeah. This is like Fight Club. It's a Club, very dude movie. The dude movie. And a lot of people see it like that, and I, and I hate that because it very underappreciates the craft that goes into this movie, even mm -hmm. with the toned down color correction, with the way that the story is told, all the way up to the ending. There's literally only one part in the movie that I don't like, and that's when uh, Ryan, Matt Damon, <laughs> tells his story. Yeah. That's it. It's the one part I don't like in the movie. I really do not care for that part. Everything else I would not cut out. Uh, I have one argument, I think, Go in ahead. favor of Jaws. All right. Name your second favorite shark movie. Name your second favorite Ryan movie. <laughs> <laughs> As I, it, I mean, like, I, I get, I get it. Say, Saving Blue Private Ryan. Which one meters down? <laughs> Which one would it say? The Blake Lively one? So, look, like, I get it. Saving Open Private Ryan is very, very, very good. It is also from a genre full of really intense, great movies. And, and Spielberg did something that I don't think anybody has necessarily even done since with Jaws. I don't know, man. Is this Jaws' category, or, or, or do we have to go Saving Private Ryan? Because I like Saving Private Ryan a lot, too, but I'm, I'm just thinking about the, the scratching on the chalkboard and the feeding Chum into the water, and then he shows up. There's all the moments. All this, the I'll moments. Say, I'll say this, I'll say this, I'll say this. I haven't seen Jaws in a bit, right? And maybe, maybe, maybe is the fact that I have two, three, and four in my mind <laughs> since I've seen that one. Right. But you make a good point. You really? <laughs> Over Ryan? Eh. If, you're, if you feel more strongly about it, I'll go Saving Private Ryan. Look, I, I feel like there's nothing to say about Saving Private Ryan not not being watched or, or whatnot. I feel like that is definitely... Um, I, I think it's interesting because the more that we age, I feel like I don't know if that's in the top of the list for people to watch. But as I was getting into movies, that was on the top of the list for people yeah. to watch. Right? I want to say it's still there. I think so, too. I want to say it's still there, but I don't know because times have changed, right? I, I, I saw all the all of these movies I saw because of the blockbuster era. Yeah. I went in there. He said, here's your Spielberg list. Go watch them. And I did. And that's when I saw a majority of these right there. Catch Me If You Can, Minority Report, um, Saving Private Ryan, Munich, a bunch of these that were here, right? Yeah. Jaws is more iconic than Saving Private Ryan. Jaws doesn't get called the dude movie. Mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. I will forever say Saving Private Ryan. But as the Spielberg bracket, I will say, I'll say Jaws. Because it ain't winning this next one. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so as we get into it, uh, Jurassic Park versus Minority Report. Now, I think I made that it known. I think that if this was like any other field, we would know what would win this matchup. Like if this was any other two people, Jurassic Park goes and goes ahead and takes this. But like, this is our bracket. This is our bracket. We're in charge. <laughs> We are in charge. I dig the hell out of Minority Report. I really, really like that movie. I and really I really love Minority Report. And, and, and I think that it just is so underrated. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know if I feel the same way about Jurassic Park uh, as a lot of other people do. I know I could probably give that same <laughs> name your second favorite dinosaur movie <laughs> argument here. But it look it's it, i think there's a limit to what Jurassic Park does well and i think it's a thing that a lot of other movies do well too uh i don't think there's a lot of movies that do the kind of playing with your mind playing with your idea of the future playing with your morality really introducing unbelievable production design and cgi mm -hmm. the way that minority report did so i'm going to go minority report Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna bash Jurassic Park. I saw Jurassic Park 3D in IMAX when it got re-released, and it lives up to the hype and everything. Like I, I still think it's a fantastic movie. It, three times a year. I'm not even kidding you because I've counted it since 2015, in 2016, and 2017, and I've already seen it multiple times. This I've already it already filled a quota of three times that it's been referenced. Mm -hmm. The water cup jiggling as something comes to attack. In every movie, drama, comedy, that is referenced. Even Inception. In almost, Inception even takes it. It's in everything. I'm going to put you this ultimatum here because we're at this point where it don't really matter. I am of right. that belief. You can't pick one over the other. At the end of the day, we get to keep all these movies and watch them all the time. Mm -hmm. If we're picking Minority Report, Minority Report is winning. <laughs> that is the only way I'm picking Minority Report. Minority Report is winning. I can see Jurassic Park being the number one in the in the in the in this thing as well. Right. Seeing at the end of this, Jurassic Park as the winner of the Spielberg uh, uh, bracket, I'm more than fine with. Seeing Minority Report and getting those people who've been like, I haven't really? seen that one yet. I haven't seen that one yet. If these boys said it's that good. Then maybe we're saying something, and I, for one, am, I'm, I'm not just saying it for the fact that I want to be different. I'm saying it for the fact that I'm looking at Minority Report right there right. as I own it on DVD and Blu-ray. Right, and that comes down to, like, look, these are our opinions and taste and, and Facts. things things change. Minority Report over Jurassic Park. Let's get into these finals. Okay. Minority Report versus Jaws. Shoot. One's in the Give past. <laughs> are you ready for it? You know when Minority Report came out? I'm going to switch it up real quick just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say 2003. Something like that. 2002. This helps my point even more. Minority Report came out in 2002. Watch it right now in the year of our Lord 2018. Why does it feel like it was made in the future? <sighs> it's if really I'm lying, interesting. I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Watch I mean, Jaws even, now. If even vintage. the discussions that I think we're having now when it comes to uh, law enforcement are still minority relevant Report. to the way that Minority Report is, it was discussing them. I think there's a really interesting documentary I saw on HBO a year or two ago called Thought Crimes, which mm -hmm. is, is basically the Minority Report idea, uh, except a real documentary about a dude in the NYPD. I don't know, man. Like, you know, what we're talking about here is really two big iconic moments in Spielberg's career. Mm -hmm. Jaws launching the blockbuster era, that is true. creating really, a whole really new point. genre of, of these horror movie of these of these creature horror movies basically uh, versus Minority Report being this really forward underrated but really forward looking beautifully designed film that I think you know I think there's an argument to be made that Jaws influ influenced more good movies, but Minority Report is more influential to movies right now. Yes. That's a very good point to make it. it. You brought up a great point. No one was able to take the idea of the shark and make a better movie with it. It was, however, it did, however, spawn blockbusters. And by spawning blockbusters, you have this whole new market of, of, of films... And I don't see many of them hitting as hard as the influence that Minority Report has been able to do. And I truly mean it when I say Minority Report to this day, if you were to watch it, it 
feels futuristic. We talk about albums. I was listening to some albums from 11, from 2011. I'm like, this sounds dated already, mm -hmm. right? We see that with music all the time that it sounds dated of an era. Minority Report does not feel like that. The ideas do not feel like that. The visuals do not feel like that. Yeah, and that's really something special. All the time. Par particularly considering like, I think there's CGI from the mid 2000s that looks really gross already. And yeah. that, that this is not one of those is, is kind of a big deal. I don't know. So this is our bracket. I keep saying it again. And I think for that reason Long alone, maybe we got to go Minority Report. It's, it's Minority Report? It lines up with our interests and values and, yeah. and it's what we want people to go check out and see. Because I think that's one of his most underwatched movies. As everybody's Oracles seen Jaws. Everybody's seen Jaws. And look, yeah, Jaws. if you are watching this and you haven't seen Jaws, then you're ignoring a lot of other people's mm -hmm. recommendations as well as our own. Yeah. Other people will tell you to watch Jaws. We're telling you go check out Minority, Minority Report. Report. Because it is this is factual. It is 100%. Trump is putting it in a decree tomorrow. <laughs> These ain't opinions. Minority Report, like The Godfather 2 over Godfather, is the greatest Spielberg movie of all time. <laughs> Can you imagine bracket. if we put this you're out right. as a For list? And we list, I'm curious. I'm curious to know. Jurassic Park could have been a winner. E.T. could have been a winner. Schindler's List is always a winner. Jaws is a winner. That's what happens when you are such an iconic director. And such yeah. an iconic director, that's why you get chosen to make things like Ready Player One. That is literally paying homage to all of your contemporaries. Yeah, this dude's and, got like 10, 20 all-time, all-time yep. movies. So, so it's not yeah. exactly an easy uh, discussion to mm -hmm. decide on. So that's our Spielberg bracket. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. What would you have winning? What would you have beating out Minority Report? Any of the movies that we had going up against Minority Report actually better than Minority Report? And we don't know it. Uh, let us know down below. We will move on.